Today I want to show you how you can find a unit cell edge length when you're given the density of a particular substance, usually an atomic metal. This question asks if elemental magnesium crystallizes in a face-centered cubic lattice and the density of magnesium is 1.736 grams per centimeter cubed, what is the unit cell edge length? One thing you're going to need to know to do this kind of question is how many atoms there are in the unit cell and a face-centered cubic lattice has four atoms in its unit cell. The trick is to use the density to find the volume of a single unit cell. So, what do we know? All we are given is that the density of magnesium is 1.738 Cent, uh, grams per centimeter cubed. 738 grams per centimeter cubed. What can we find with that? We can convert that to a number of moles per centimeter cubed. How do you convert mass to moles? You divide it by the molar mass. The molar mass of magnesium, according to my periodic table, is 24.305 and on my calculator, 1.738 divided by 24.305 gives 0.0715 moles. So, every cubic centimeter of magnesium has this many moles in it. How many molecules is that? Or rather, I should say, how many atoms is that? Well, to convert from moles to atoms, you multiply by Avogadro's number. Nothing here that's too shocking for you, I hope. Times 6.022 to the times 10 to the power of 23. The answer I get is 4.306. More, that's now in atoms per centimeter cubed. If I, oh, ha, huh, 4.306 times 10 to the power of 22 atoms per centimeter cubed. If I know how many atoms I have in my cubic centimeter, I can figure out how many unit cells I have in my cubic centimeter, because there are four atoms in every unit cell. Divide it by four, divide it by four, I get uh, 1.0766 times 10 to the power of 22. So I have 1.0766 times 10 to the 22 unit cells in every single centimeter cubed. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip that. On your calculator, 1 divided by the answer that you had. Mine comes out to 9.2889 times 10 to the negative 23. If you take 1 divided by, you're actually going to flip your units. That's Now, that's how many cubic centimeters there are per unit cell. See, that's the concept of, res of a reciprocal. And you thought you'd never use it for math, eh? This is awesome. Now I know exactly what the volume of a single unit cell is. So I can easily go straight from that to the edge length of one unit cell. Because each of these unit cells is a cube, the way that we find the edge length from the volume is to take the cube root of it. Luckily for you, or maybe for me, I should say, I have a button for that. It's this cube root button, if you can see it on my calculator. It's a little square root with a three. The cube root of that number is this. I get 4.5288 times 10 to the negative eight, and now that's in centimeters. So cube root of the volume of one unit cell will give its edge length, and that's my edge length. Now, 
I had to make this even more, a little bit more complicated, I should say, but uh, most often edge length is not given in centimeters. If I convert this to meters, that just means I'm dividing by 100, aka this is the same as 4.5288 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. And then the most common unit to use for unit cell width is picometers. And to do picometers, hold on, let me just divide by 100 here. I'll prove to you that I get that small length in meters, c times 10 to the negative 10. To convert to picometers, you have to divide by 10 to the power of negative 12. See what I'm doing there? And you get 453, or 452. 2.88, whichever you prefer. So, the edge length of this cell is 453 picometers. Best of luck in your own calculations.